So you wrote another book recently, which I'm uh, in the process of reading. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, fine math. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you explore um, how taxes are, you took, I, I'm guessing you took a similar approach comparing um, like, yes, uh, yeah. taxes to different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that, um, that caught my eye when I was reading the book was um, you say that most countries have like a value added tax, which focuses on spending rather than um, income tax. Yeah, um, do you think, um, in, in my opinion, that's a more, uh, a better tax system um, because you like from from the chain of command, like let's say you go into Starbucks, you charge at the distribution level, at the production level, at the sale level, um, and you get your money that way instead of just um, uh, charging someone's income or so forth. Do you think that um, the U.S. should adopt that system, or do you do you have any ideas for a better system, or? Yeah, I strongly feel, and frankly, every tax expert in the United States feels that the United States should have a value-added tax. A value-added tax is kind of a, a sales tax. Uh, it's a, when you when you <clears throat> buy a book, the price of the book is twenty-five bucks, but of course you end up paying twenty-eight fifty with the tax. Um, that we call that a sales tax in the United States. Other countries call it a value-added tax. Um, this is a form of taxation that was invented in France in the 1950s, and it really worked. It brings in a lot of income, um, and it doesn't tax work. It's not an income tax. It doesn't make, make you pay a tax for going to work. We want people to go to work. It doesn't tax investment. Um, it doesn't tax your gain in the market. So people will invest. We want people to invest. So it doesn't tax the things we want to encourage uh, it just taxes consumption um, and as a result because it's such a successful tax and taxes the right things 170 of the 200 countries in the world have adopted a value-added tax the united states is the only big country that hasn't done so and um, it, it's just a good tax it works well it's a good way to raise money for government and that's why republicans hate it they call the value added tax a money machine because it just brings in lots of money for government. Um, but if you do it right, if you put on a value added tax and then use that revenue to cut the income tax, to cut the investment tax, um, then it, it has good policy implications. When I wrote, I wrote that book, it's called A Fine Mess. It's available now. It makes great, uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinner and give it or Christmas giving, go out and buy it for your mom. She'll love it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I wrote that book, I was invited to give a talk to the uh, House Ways and Means Committee. That's the committee of the House of Representatives that writes our tax laws. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's all this gridlock and, and uh, ang anger and, and political division in our country. But one thing the Ways and Means Committee does, which I was quite impressed was, they have a dinner in a restaurant in Washington every month just for the members, not for staff, not for lobbyists, just the members go to dinner together. And they invited me to come in and speak at this dinner. And I was so impressed. They all know each other. They're all on a first name basis. They're friends. Hi, Bill. How are Betty and the kids? You know, and oh, Sally, congrats on that new bill you passed. They know each other. And they really know health policy, I mean, tax policy, both the Republicans and Democrats. I was so impressed with their knowledge of tax policy. Anyway, so I was in there speaking and I said, you know, what we really need is, is a value added tax. And every member of that committee, Republican, Democrat, young, old, every one of them said, yeah, yeah, of course you're right. We know that the United States ought to have a value added tax. And then they said, but it'll never pass. It'll never mm -hmm. pass. Um, uh, and the reason is Republicans think a value added tax is a money machine. It brings in too much money for government. And Democrats think it's regressive. That is, it hurts poor people more because poor people spend more of their money on consumption. Um, and therefore, they're going to get hit worse by a value added tax. 
uh, and therefore neither party likes the idea, so it won't pass, even though it's a good idea. Uh, and my answer to that, as I explain in the book, is there are ways around this. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use it to reduce other taxes so it's not a money machine for government, and you can design a value-added tax so that it doesn't hurt poor people so much. For example, you can design a tax where you only tax fur coats and Cadillacs. You don't have to tax a, a bottle of milk or a, you know, a, a pill for your sick kid. Just don't tax those. So you can design a value-added tax so that it's not regressive and it's not a money machine, but uh, and it's a very good idea. We ought to have one. I think eventually we will have one in the United States because one of the things we've learned in our country is we will always do the right thing. Eventually, it may take us a long time. Mm -hmm. Just like, as I say in my book, eventually we will get to the point where we provide health care for every American at reasonable cost. It's taken way too long, but we're going to do it. And we will eventually put in a value added tax to make our tax code fairer and simpler. But it's going to take a while. These things don't mm -hmm. go so smoothly in the United States. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading your book, you had a section on specific products, for example, um, cigarettes or gas. You compared like uh, certain countries tax on gas to other countries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the same with cigarettes. Yeah. Have you um, seen uh, countries that have taxed cigarettes, for example, heavily? Um, have they had um, decreased uh, smoking rates or uh, countries that have heavily taxed um, gas, for example, have they switched to electric? Um, has that been the case? Yes, that's absolutely the case. If you take the gas tax, for example, um, it used to be that every car made in America was a gas guzzler. And then particularly the Japanese cars, Honda, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Nissan, started bringing these high mileage cars to the United States, cars that got 30, 40 miles to the gallon. And guess what? Americans bought them. Americans mm -hmm. bought them. And uh, that was because gas cost so much in those countries, people couldn't drive a gas guzzler. Um, and, and so raising the gas tax promotes the kind of innovation, either high uh, mileage cars or e-vehicles, electric cars, or now the Japanese are working on hydrogen cars. Um, a, a, a high gas tax <clears throat> leads to that. That leads to fewer dangerous emissions. Um, it provides just as much money to build roads. So, so it's a good idea. And as for the tax on cigarettes, uh, there's dramatic, dramatic evidence of how effective that is right here in the United States. In 1966, 42% uh, of American adults smoked at least once a week, and more than 50% of American men smoked once a week or every day, and we had high rates of lung cancer. Starting in 1966, the federal government and particularly states started loading very heavy taxes on cigarettes. Today, 16% of Americans smoke one uh, cigarette a week. That's partly because of education, but I think it's mainly because it's become such an expensive habit that people don't do it anymore. So I think, yeah, that kind of tax really works. Interestingly, economists say the taxes should be neutral. That is, uh, the tax should not affect your conduct. You should pay the tax, not, you should buy a house, not because of a tax rate, but because you and your family need that house and it makes sense for you. Um, but there are some taxes uh, known gen generically as sin taxes, where they do want the tax to influence behavior and a tax on cigarettes uh, does that. It, it uh, makes people stop smoking, and it's worked dramatically well in every country, including the United States. Mm -hmm. And another um, uh, area that uh, um, I wanted to talk about, like corporate tax, for example, big yeah. companies um, like Amazon, for example, um, a lot of these companies, um, I think in your book you'd mentioned that they pay a higher if, if everything's fair, they pay a, they're supposed to pay a higher um, tax rate 
if if the same company was based in another country yeah. um do you and there's been um ways that amazon or other big companies or google they have their bases in other countries to avoid these um tax laws yeah. um is there anything that the u.s government or anyone can do to say you were based you were founded in america your whole operation is in america you have to abide by these rules is there any enforcement or anything that's being done yeah this this was and still is but it was previously even worse a major problem in american taxation um, it used to be that the United States had one of the highest rates of corporate income tax, 36, 37%, much higher than in other countries. And so the co corporations, not surprisingly, engaged in a practice known as profit shifting. That is, when they made a profit, they found a way on their books to say they earned that profit in Ireland or in Switzerland or in Bermuda, for example. Um, Microsoft, which is a giant American company, it sells around the world. It, it has a small volume of sales, maybe one one hundredth of one percent of its sales are in Bermuda. They found a way to transfer about eighty percent of their profits to Bermuda, where the corporate income tax rate was zero. Uh, mm -hmm. This was just done through fiscal manipulation, through maneuvering the books. And many, in fact, most American companies did that. Um, I, I describe a whole bunch of them in my book, companies that, that took advantage of that. Apple, Google, Caterpillar Tractor, uh, drug companies, and um, restaurant chains somehow managed to shift their profits to Switzerland. And uh, in the 2017 Tax Act, this is the Tax Act that President Trump uh, argued for or, you know, said was the biggest tax cut in American history. Um, they did crack down on that to quite a degree. They made it significantly harder for American corporations to shift profits overseas. Uh, another thing they did in that bill was they, they cut the corporate tax rate to 21%, um, which means it's really not that much higher than other countries. So there's less incentive for companies to shift their profits. Companies are still doing this, and they're still caught at it um, every week of the year. But we, we did take a major step, and I noticed that the new Biden administration says they're going to step up those efforts to crack down on profit shifting so that American corporations pay, pay taxes in America where they get the benefits of our military defense, of our trade laws, of our courts, of our patent system. Uh, they get a lot of benefits from living in the United States. So why don't we ask them to pay some taxes to help pay for it? Mm 